Hi guys, story recaps here, today, I am going to explain, is a Japanese, zombie manga movie, called, I'm a Hero. Spoilers ahead, watch out, and take care. Hideo Suzuki, a manga artist assistant, is sitting in an office drawing with his co-workers while listening to the news. A 45-year-old woman was brutally bitten by a dog, according to a news reporter. Because the woman began babbling nonsense after the incident, the authorities were unable to determine what had occurred. The following news item covers a 35-year-old man who was arrested for committing obscene activities. One co-worker notes how strange the news has become, while another co-worker, Matani, mocks Suzuki and manga artists. Suzuki goes on to say that manga is the pinnacle of Japanese culture and that becoming a manga artist is a privilege. He inspires his co-workers, and everyone exclaims, manga is the best. Suzuki returns home late at night. He sketches and watches TV in his apartment with Teko, his passive-aggressive lover. He considers his manga prize, as well as inspirational statements such as the Steve Jobs of Manga World and the Road to Manga, is tough. Suzuki is looking for ideas for his next comic, so he pulls out a gun from his cabinet and examines himself in the mirror. At the publisher's office, where Suzuki is showing his new manga comic about a macho guy protecting his fiancé with a rifle, everyone is sick and coughing in the morning. The publisher dislikes the comic, claiming that the protagonist is too ordinary, and instructing Suzuki to improve his work in the future. Suzuki is then approached by Sensei, another manga artist. Sensei is more well-known than him, although they shared the award for Best Newbie Manga Artist 15 years ago. Suzuki later fights with Teko in his apartment, who wants to sell the rifle so they can at least make some money and pay their rent. She also wants to sell his manga books and his prize. Suzuki's failures and unrealized goals of becoming the next best manga artist irritate Teko. So she breaks up with him and kicks him out of the flat in a fit of wrath. Suzuki then takes his revolver to the park and begins reading Sensei's comic book. Suzuki is sitting next to a homeless man who is shivering and appears to be in pain, but Suzuki pays no attention to him. Suzuki is back in his office with his co-workers the next morning, drawing and watching the news. A new virus has already claimed the lives of four people, according to reports. Suzuki's co-worker is sweating profusely and appears to be in poor health. Matani tells the others how she received the illness from Sensei before she leaves. Matani discovers that she has the same bite mark on her neck as Sensei and deduces that they are sleeping together. When their boss enters the room, he has a bite mark as well. They are perplexed and inquire about the deadline, but they fail to notice his eyes darkening. Later, everyone is sound asleep at work when Suzuki's phone calls. Teko apologizes for last night and expresses his desire to continue their friendship. Helicopters pass over the city as Suzuki is on the phone, but Suzuki is too preoccupied with Teko to notice. He rushes over to Teko's apartment, bringing her favorite food and pleading with her to open the door. He tries calling her on the phone when no one answers. Suzuki looks through the letter slot and notices Teko on the bed. She suddenly stands up and falls on the floor, making strange movements. The next thing we know, she's having a seizure and her body is morphing in an unnatural way, as if she's a demon being exorcised. Suzuki notices her face is disfigured as she reaches the door. Suzuki is attacked by a zombie Teko, who bites his hand. In an attempt to flee, he staggers her in the head and flees the flat quickly. He spots a woman with a bleeding hand and then dozens of warplanes soaring through the city as he crosses the bridge. Suzuki notices Matani standing next to the TV with his back to him when he returns to the office. Suzuki believes he is a zombie as well, but when he sees him carrying a bloody baseball bat, he enters the office discreetly, where the rest of his employees have died and Matani is the lone survivor. Suzuki is informed that the only way to kill zombies is to remove their brains, and that those who are bitten become infected. But it turns out that Matani has been bitten as well, and when he begins to change into a zombie, he shoots himself. Suzuki hastily leaves the office after another infected co-worker arrives. Half of the people on the streets are completely unaware of what is going on. Some people are strolling down the street, while others are sprinting. Within minutes, people begin to notice that there are demonic-looking zombies among them. Suzuki rushes up to a police officer, but the cop is also a zombie and begins chasing him. Suzuki is sprinting away as quickly as he can when he stomps on a large throng of individuals sprinting in the opposite direction. Cars are colliding, city buildings are catching fire, and people are being ran over by ambulances. In the midst of it all, Suzuki spots a sleeping cab driver who is utterly unconscious of the zombie apocalypse. Hiromi, a high school student, approaches him before he enters. She also tries to get into the taxi, but they are attacked by a zombie who is on the phone. 
Suzuki imagines pulling out his rifle and aiming it at the zombie, so he stands transfixed, shooting with his fingers. A man in a suit also wants to take their taxi at the same time. By luck, climb into the cab as well, telling the driver to take them to the countryside. On Kitty TV, the attacks are described as riots. It's self-evident that no one knows the solutions. So they change the channel to Tokyo TV and watch an anime animation. Suzuki believes Tokyo is safe because anime is being broadcast, but the channel quickly terminates the animation and begins reporting on the attacks. While they watch, the man in the business suit is on the phone, ordering someone to shoot everyone, including the prime minister if necessary. When he hangs up, he begins to whine about the poor, and his arm is immediately bitten. His blood vessels darken quickly. As he transforms into a zombie, he says, hey, poor people, give me a tissue. Because the cab driver is unaware that the businessman is becoming a zombie, he offers him a tissue. The new zombie bites him and then complains about the poor quality of people's meat. When the driver opens the car door, Suzuki is able to shove the undead out. When the cab driver's veins begin to turn black as well, he begins by telling them about his 30 years as a great cab driver with no automobile accidents. Then he becomes enraged and begins driving erratically. Hiromi takes the back seat, which is fortunate because the taxi driver quickly attacks them. Because the car is moving at a high pace, Suzuki and Hiromi fasten their seatbelts. They collide with another automobile and begin to tumble. The automobile is turned over when Suzuki wakes up, but Hiromi is still alive. They observe that the entire road is closed due to a massive car collision when they exit the vehicle. And they begin browsing the internet for information. They discovered the virus's name is ZQN, and that it corrupts the infected's personalities and bodies, causing physical anomalies. According to them, the infection will die if you climb Mount Fuji when your phone's battery dies. They seek shelter in an abandoned house as night comes. They start discussing about Suzuki's riffle while eating the melon bread Suzuki bought for Teko. He tells Hiromi that he didn't use it since it's illegal to use a riffle in public. He considers it to be more of a protective charm. Hiromi then adds that she has a protection charm in the form of her earbuds. When they begin to listen to music, she begins to open up, telling Suzuki that she feels secure with him. Suzuki watches at her while she sleeps the next morning, and he likes her despite the fact that she is underage. He finds a bite mark on her neck, though, and draws his rifle to defend himself. Hiromi then goes on to say that she was bitten by her neighbor's kid two days earlier and that ZQN may be transmitted through breast milk, thus she's most likely sick. Hiromi doesn't mind if Suzuki kills her because she doesn't have anything left in this world, but Suzuki refuses and claims he was bitten as well. He takes the rifle and pledges to keep her safe until they reach Mount Fuji, where the virus will be killed. When Hiromi becomes ill, they begin their terrifying trip by passing through a forest. Suzuki is asked to leave because she refuses to feed him. She gives him the earbuds as a farewell gift, and asks him to leave as she begins to transform. Suzuki begins racing through the woods, approaching a man he has seen from afar. The man, however, is merely another zombie. Suzuki is about to be devoured by the zombie when Hiromi appears out of nowhere, kills the zombie, and saves Suzuki. She begins removing the zombie's body parts with a half-demonic, half-human visage, but Suzuki is unharmed. Instead, she assists him in getting up. Suzuki and Hiromi are seated near a trailer park the next thing we know, and Suzuki is looking for canned food. Hiromi, who is half-zombie, is silent, and it's clear that she has zombie tendencies. Suzuki doesn't see her as a threat, so they continue on their journey to Mount Fiji together. After a few days, Suzuki, who now has a full beard, is carrying Hiromi on his back through the forest road when he comes upon a shopping cart. Despite the fact that he is unable to locate food, he places Hiromi in the cart and begins going toward Fuji Outlet Park. The entire outlet is empty when they arrive. He is trying for clothing in one of the stores when the zombie store manager assaults him. Hiromi is sleeping, so she can't help him, but Sugumi Ada, a woman in a mask, kills the zombie with an axe. When other masked persons arrive, she begins staring at the strange sleeping Hiromi and begins asking inquiries about the two newcomers. As more zombies approach, everyone begins to flee to a safe location. On the outlet's rooftop, all of the uninfected people created a safe zone. Suzuki accepts the invitation and brings Hiromi along without revealing that she is half zombie. They have everything they need, from food and tents to books and Rolex watches, in the safe zone. Suzuki's skill piques Tsugumi's attention, but he informs her that he is simply a manga artist. She inquires as to whether Quiet Hiromi is his sister, to which he responds that they met while fleeing zombies. Tsugumi begins to like the manga artist because she believes he is a nice person. 
She also tells him about how ZQN infected people lived in the past. Hiromi is observing Suzuki in the morning, and he wonders if she understands him. Suzuki then tells her a poem while she smiles. Hiromi appears to be getting better. Suzuki later observes the zombies and notices one of them running, leaping extremely high, and colliding with his skull on the ground. Abe, an elderly guy, tells how the zombies are acting as they have in the past, and how each zombie is unique. Suzuki then inquires about the zombies that sit on the ground and appear to be formed of charcoal, but Abe refuses to respond. It appears that something happened in the safe zone that no one wants to discuss. Suzuki then attends a meeting with the remaining survivors. They intend to gain access to the underground food storage. Suzuki's only request is that he hand over his firearm. He refuses because it is against the law, but the commander, Yura, claims that the safe zone has no laws. Yura then threatens to kill Hiromi unless he obtains the rifle. Meanwhile, a few of the survivors are attempting to kidnap Hiromi, which Sugumi is attempting to prevent. Suzuki gets a suspicion, rushes out of the meeting, and discovers Hiromi has been kidnapped. If the Ura don't let Hiromi go, he threatens to shoot them with the rifle. The leader then points a rifle at Hiromi, who is standing silently nearby. Nobody believes she has the ability to kill everyone in an instant. But she can't take it any longer and pushes the two males off her with a single movement before revealing her true identity as a ZQN. Her eye isn't black because she's only half zombie, but it's a rainbow of colors. The leader is unconcerned, so he shoots Hiromi in the head, knocking her to the ground. Suzuki's firearm is taken while he weeps over the girl's death. Suzuki is kicked and punched while pleading for forgiveness. They soon begin bickering about who will be the one to kill him. Even humans seem to enjoy the taste of blood. Everyone begins to attack one another, and Ira is quickly deposed by someone else. Suzuki is left alive, and he comes across Tsugami in front of Hiromi's tent. She managed to hide Hiromi, who is still alive, with the help of Abe. Sugami tells Suzuki that Hiromi is different from the other ZQN because she has a pulse. She also informs him about how she shirked her responsibilities and left her patients alone in the hospital, praising Suzuki for saving Hiromi. Suzuki is still upset that he wasn't able to kill Ira and that he misplaced his gun. He believes he is a coward and a loser, but Sugami assures him that he is simply a nice guy. Suzuki then apologizes for being a human with no redeeming traits and begs Tagami to look after the girl while he and the others walk to the food stockpile. Later, a few survivors use pans to attract the zombies' attention to the roof, while the rest of the survivors make their way to the underground food storage from the other side of the structure. Everything is dark when they arrive underneath the building, and one of them makes a noise by accident. Someone turns on the lights while they're walking, but no one challenges it. They find the storage right away, but they have no idea that someone is watching them through the surveillance camera. The mystery watcher puts on music in the outlet as they pack food, and a zombie assaults one of the survivors, who is also looking for a snack. They shoot both the victim and the undead, but the parking lot is overrun with other zombies. Suzuki finishes last, apologizing for abandoning one of the people who is being devoured. The majority of the survivors are eaten and killed in the parking lot due to poor tactics and selfishness on the part of the survivors. And the man responsible for all of this is none other than Ira, who deliberately turned on the music to lure the zombies. He had another idea, which was to take the only automobile in the parking lot. Suzuki takes refuge in a storage locker amid the mayhem. At the same time, the high-jumping zombie stalks the roof, preparing for a massive leap. He dashes forward and leaps as high as he can, landing on a tent. When one of the survivors notices the zombie approaching her, she freezes. The zombie consumes her and then assaults another woman with his bare hands, squashing her head. Yura examines security footage and enters a passkey, allowing additional zombies to access the building. Suzuki is still hiding when he receives word on a walkie-talkie that a zombie has killed nearly everyone on the rooftop. Sugami is terrified on the roof with Hiromi, so she anxiously calls for assistance on the walkie-talkie. Because they are either hidden or being eaten, no one responds. Suzuki is still hiding in the locker, running through scenarios in his thoughts about escaping and fighting the zombies who surround him, but he is murdered in every scenario. He decides to stay in the locker because his fear and imagination are getting the best of him, but he hears Tsugami crying on the walkie-talkie, which reminds him of Hiromi. He realizes that he must conquer his fear, so he begins yelling and exits the locker. Suzuki is ambushed by a zombie who attacks him right away. Fortunately, he is wearing 10 Rolex watches on his wrist and is not infected by the undead. Suzuki then takes out his walkie-talkie and informs Tsugami that he'll be there shortly. However, the two of them agree to meet in the parking lot and share one of the vehicles. 
Sugami is carrying Hiromi on her back as Suzuki fights zombies with his ingenious tactics such as spreading rice on the floor to make the monster slip. When she arrives, he discovers Iura, who wishes to make love to her and abandon Suzuki. Iura, on the other hand, is bitten and swiftly transforms into a zombie. Sugami begins to run with Hiromi on her back, but Suzuki intervenes and saves them. They observe a large gang of zombies chasing towards Ade not long after. Nobody knows what to do when the survivors are surrounded by zombies. Hiromi, on the other hand, begins to speak for the first time, telling Suzuki that she is fine when she is with him. He becomes energized and begins firing as many zombies as he can. Only Suzuki, Hiromi, and Sugami survive in the end. Except for the athlete zombie that jumped onto the roof, they manage to kill all of the zombies. Suzuki manages to shoot the zombie in the head with the last round he has. The gunshot has no effect on the zombie because his head has already been flattened. Rather, he heads straight for Tsugami and Hiromi. And he uses the rifle as a bat, destroying the zombie's brain for good this time. Surrounded by a flow of dead zombies, the three depart the outlet. Tsugami fires up a cigarette and cranks up the music in the car, while Suzuki wonders if he'll turn into a zombie. After all of this, he still doesn't consider himself a hero. Subscribe and turn on the notifications. We daily upload videos like this.